Hello, everyone, and welcome to this presentation with Earn Software here at ABG Investor Days. My name is Östen Lodgar. I am an analyst that cover Earn Software here at ABG. And with me today, I have Sten Roger Carlson, which is the CEO of the company. So, Sten Roger, please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you, Estein, and thank you for inviting me to the Investor Days. I am uh, very delighted to speak to you today about Earn Software. Slide two, please. I have added a disclaimer to the slide deck. Please read it if you choose to download the presentation afterwards. Slide three, please. So my name is Sten Roger Carlsen. I'm the CEO at Earn Software. I have been with the company since 2017, and I've been the CEO the past three and a half years. I have a Master of Science degree in construction, and I've been working with technology and software for more than 20 years now. Slide four. So Earn Software is a leading Nordic software as a service company. We deliver mobile and cloud-based software solutions, which our customers subscribe to. Many of our customers have a lot of property, technical equipment and assets that must be operated, managed and developed in a sustainable and efficient way. There are a thousand details to keep track of, and therefore, we are very committed to giving our customers insight into all the details in their operations, while at the same time, giving them a complete overview. We currently have 177 employees at 12 different office locations in five countries, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland, and Finland. Slide five. Earn software helps a wide range of industries with value creation. We do this by offering a broad portfolio of software that solves specific challenges that these industries face. We have customers in industries like production industry, food and beverage, real estate, construction, and aquaculture. And by digitizing work processes and by helping customers become more data-driven, we contribute to increased interaction and improved quality, efficiency, and sustainability. And managers within our customers uh, use the solutions to plan and optimize operations and increase utilization of their properties and assets, while the operators are using it to efficiently uh, carry out day-to-day -day activities and maintenance tasks. Slide six. Earn has a strong position within three market segments. One, real estate management with NOC 150 million in annual recurring revenues, or ARR in short. Number two, industrial maintenance and quality control with NOC 55 million in ARR. Number three, energy and sustainability management, with, which is a new segment uh, from 2021 for us, with NOC 16 million in ARR. Slide seven. We absolutely love software as a service, and we live and breathe with it every day. It is so much more rewarding for us to focus on customer happiness, success and value creation, rather than running from one software sale to another, like we did in the old days. Recurring revenue create a huge predictability for our income, not only short term, but for years to come. Makes it a lot easier to balance investments versus performance metrics and profitability. And it's not given that a SaaS solution is sticky. But if you are committed to the SaaS business model's best practice and continuously focus on your product market fit and customer success, your product will end up having a low churn. A low churn means high lifetime value and consequentially high return of investment on sales, even if sales cycles are long and customer acquisition costs high. Selling software in the cloud leads to extreme scalability with gross margin typically between 90 and 100%. 2021 was an excellent year for us in our software when it comes to all these important metrics. Slide eight. Recurring, uh, annual recurring revenue is the most important metric for us. With a low churn, in our case, no more than 6% in 
2021, the recurring revenue run rate gives a fantastic predictability in the cash flows. And in 2021, we grew our ARR with 111%, partly driven by M&A, but even organic growth has been as high as 14%. We delivered a 24% EBTA margin set to improve significantly going forward, which I will come back to, uh, and a gross margin of 89%, which is evidence of great scalability. And finally, to the right, uh, I give numbers on our lifetime value of a cu new customer in re relation to the cost of acquiring the customer. 15 times in the real estate management segment and as much as 24% in, in the industrial maintenance and quality control segment. So to sum it up, we are in great shape in a great industry. Slide nine. There are some key trends that are driving the demand for our solutions. Our customers need to continuously improve its efficiency to stay competitive and relevant. And implementing digital tools that are easy to use and that simplifies their workflows is an important part of meeting this need. We also see that regulatory, uh, regulatory demands are getting stricter and reporting needs are increasing, and especially within the sustainability area related to the green shift and green financing and the people's increase in social responsibility in general. And then you have the mega trends like digitalization, smart buildings and in industry 4.0 uh, that are pushing the technological development, introducing prop tech, IoT, artificial intelligence as examples, which in turn, again, en enables increased efficiency. So we have positioned earned to deliver on all these areas and to help our customers meeting tomorrow's and uh, today's needs and demands. Slide 10. Some key figures. We have close to 2,000 customers with 280,000 daily users of our software solutions. And they are using it to manage 1 million technical components, uh, 38,000 residents, and 100,000 buildings, covering close to 90 million square meters of floor space. Slide 11. Taking a step back to our near history, during the recent years, we have had extreme growth. Our growth journey started when the private equity firm Viking Venture in invested into our company back in 2017. And at that point, we established a growth strategy uh, focused on the buy and build story and customer success. By following this strategy, we've been able to increase IRR with more than 10 times since 2017. Much of the growth is driven by nine acquisitions, but we have also succeeded with organic initiatives and increased ARR organically with a CAGR of 28% during the same period. By the end of 2021, Earn Software had a total of NOC 220 million in ARR. Slide 12. Earn's uh, consolidated revenues were NOC 194 million in 2021. And, and this is based on PL figures according to Norwegian Gap, which means that the acquired revenue only is reflected from the month of the actual acquisition. The revenue CAGR has been 55% over the uh, last three years. The adjusted EBTA has grown with a CAGR of 128% over the same period, which is a good indication that we are slowly moving towards our own long-term profitability goals. Slide 13. We are very proud of our customer base. Not only does it count almost 2,000 customers, but it contains ma uh, many large and well-known Nordic brands. In average, our customers stay with us for more than 10 years, which result in a very low churn. Our customer base has more than doubled during the last 12, uh, sorry, 18 months. Slide 14. Being a software as a service company, our business model is focused on achieving a high percentage of recurring revenues. 
And in addition to selling our software solutions to new customers, recurring revenue growth has been achieved by following an, an established growth model. We have been acquiring successful SaaS businesses that fit into our product and, and business strategies. Acquisitions in the past have been motivated by consolidating core markets, expanding the product portfolio, and by geographical expansion. We will use this uh, experience from the 10 acquisitions in the past to, to succeed with new acquisitions in the Nordic countries, as well as in Europe going forward. And then customer success is an important part of our business model. If we are to succeed with upselling, cross-selling, and be able to make price adjustments without the customers canceling their subscription, we are dependent on them achieving success by using our solutions. By working closely with our customers, we ensure that we deliver the digital tools they need to be able to increase their quality, efficiency, and sustainability. And we ensure value creation and customer satisfaction. To increase the percentage of recurring revenues, we are constantly looking at opportunities to convert services from typical non-recurring activities to recurring subscriptions. And last but not least, we invest in product development. Firstly, to bring new products and features to the market so we can maintain our competitive power. And secondly, to ensure that acquired products fit into our best of breed offering and may be delivered to uh, our customers as combined and integrated solutions. Slide 15. Our current market in the Nordic countries is a NOC 14 billion market, where only 22% is addressed. We have just scratched the surface in terms of the potential in our home market, and we still see significant M&A opportunities here. But there is also a huge upside by scaling into other digitally advanced markets in Europe, like the Dutch countries and heavily industrialized neighboring countries like Czechia and Poland, as well as UK and the Benelux. These areas combined represent a NOC 55 billion market, in addition to the market size of the Nordic market. And here only 10 to 20% is addressed because these markets are still in its digital infancy the spend in this space is set to grow 15% annually over the next five to 10 years. Slide 16. We exited uh, 2021 in great shape and after a tremendously exciting and busy year. Our top priority in 2021 has been to successfully execute on our, on our M&A strategy and welcome the acquired businesses following our proven model of post-merger integration. We also worked hard strengthening our sales organization. Our sales force has worked systematically with building a pipeline of new business and going into 2022, this pipeline is very healthy. During 2022, our main focus will be on reaping the benefits of being more than twice as large as one year ago. M&A is less of focus right now, and I really look forward to unleashing the full force of our all the new colleagues, focusing solely on helping customers, attracting new customers, and driving growth in earn. We are continuing to scale the commercial organization, and six new sales reps will be hired during this year. All in all, during this year, we'll be able to take a step change in, in terms of profitability and cash flow. As you can see here, we expect our adjusted EBTA margin to improve from 24% in 2021 to the targeted, targeted range of 28 to 30% in 2022. Combined with a revenue target of around NOC 250 million, up from 194 million in 2021. The CAPEX as a percentage of revenue will remain stable and hopefully and somewhat lower than in 2021. The CAPEX as a percentage of revenue is expected to be re uh, reduced in the years to come, which implies an ex uh, expected significant boost in the cash earnings. 
The implication is also that we expect to be cash positive in 2022, also including interest expenses. Slide 17. We have set out a few long-term high-level targets as well for 2025. By the end of 2025, the goal is to have grown organically to knock 430 million in ARR. This means that we expect growth in ARR to accelerate uh, gradually in the years to come as our pipeline materializes and we get increased effect from the growing sales force. Our SaaS solutions scale extremely well. So by 2025, our goal is to reach an EBTA margin above 40%. And market-wise, we want to be recognized as the dominant best of breed player in the European market. Slide 18. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the last slide. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much, Sten uh, Then we can go over to some Q&A. Uh, so like you said, uh, M&A is less of a focus for you right now. And you have completed a lot of transactions over the past year. Uh, what do you uh, think you uh, can do with all these acquisitions that you made? Historically, you've been very good at driving the ARR growth. What are the key initiatives that you're going to implement in these acquired companies? Yeah, uh, we sure see opportunities to realize synergies from the, the latest acquisitions that we've done. Uh, obviously, cross-selling our products to existing customers is, is one focus area, but also working more efficiently on, yeah, I would say, administration and development of new products and technology, resource sharing uh, as one example. Um, product management is... is uh, one of the areas that we always address early on in the post-merger integration process to synchronize roadmaps and enable to de the delivery of combined and an integrated solution to our customers into the market. And then this process often leads to adjustments in work processes and to uh, sometimes also to the organization to ensure that we work more efficiently and streamlined as possible. So, so I, I think also given that we have been in a post uh, or in a COVID situation, um, these integration processes and making all these changes takes a little bit more time because we are, haven't been able to kind of meet so often as we have been doing in a normal situation. Uh, but we for sure will do some, some uh, adjustments uh, that will get, give us synergies. Mm. It's very interesting that you mentioned cross-selling with, with multiple uh, solutions now. Uh, can you quantify, try to quantify the kind of cross-selling potential that you see in your portfolio today? Yeah, well, um, we did a large project during second half of last year to identify cross-selling opportunities in the portfolio after the new uh, um, acquisitions that we did, did uh, looking at our products, uh, talking to almost 20% of our existing customers to really understand the market dynamics and the need out there and to uh, enable a structured approach to this new and large cross-selling opportunity that we have. Then we have established a, a lead scoring system based on ideal customer profile and personas so that we ensure we approach the lowest hanging fruit first. Um, the project uh, is uh, being implemented now in January, and we, it will be interesting uh, to follow this in the months to come. So, so to, to sum it up uh, somehow, the potential is, is large that is identified. The, the project is implemented, but given that even cross-selling is, is selling, we still expect to witness lead times according to each kind of product's sales cycles, which means uh, for some of our products, we need to be patient to see how and when we can kind of materialize on the potential that we have found. Mm. Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, we also see some of the larger players in the software space raising prices pretty significantly, like for instance, this Microsoft. Could we also see uh, you do some price hikes in your portfolio over the coming year? 
Yes, uh, changing price uh, models on the acquired companies uh, to ensure that they are flexible and scalable, that like we have done over several years in Earn, is, is always a priority. And sometimes these price models are all almost uh, like we want them even before the acquisitions, and sometimes we have to do a lot of changes. And we also could consider kind of our the price levels and, and try to balance the price point with the actual value that we create towards our customers and also, of course, look at comp competition and so on. But uh, price adjustments will continue to be an important part of our organic growth. But yeah. as we grow bigger, I expect the price hiking part to become less dominant uh, than it has been historically. This is also the reason why it's important for us to kind of build a strong sales force to enable organic growth through new sales and cross sales in addition to price increases. Hmm. Interesting. And uh, you also have invested in more salespeople to drive uh, more sales by bringing in new customers. Have you have you begun to to see some effects of this already? When when or when do you expect to see effects from this? Yes. Um... Organic growth and profitability are our main focus areas in 2022, and that is why also we have continued this to scale the commercial organization. And um, we also did that in 2021, so we did see some positive effects in Q4 with an organic growth of 14%, and we believe this positive trend will continue into 2022. Um, that being said, some of our products have a 12 to 18 month sales cycle which means that it sometimes takes time to kind of close sales, even if activity is high and leads are pushed through the sales funnel. Um, however, I think the hard work that is put into the sales uh, has increased lead generation and provided a pipeline that is very, very promising for the period to come and their activity is, is very high. So, so um, I have great belief in uh, success in that area in 2022. It looks like Earn has a very exciting year uh, ahead of itself. Thank you very much for taking the time to present to us today, uh, Sten Roger, and thank you to everyone who listened in. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.